Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. As promised, this week is going to be completely on CICD and as part of it, the first video that I'm going to share is on Jenkins shared libraries. So what are you going to learn today? Firstly, you will understand the concept of shared libraries. What is shared library? What are the advantages of shared library? Why you have to use shared libraries in Jenkins? Then we will move towards understanding scenario based and theory based interview questions on shared libraries. And finally, the most interesting part that is the live demo where I'm going to explain you step by step on how to configure shared library, how to write a shared library and how to use the shared library in your existing Jenkins pipeline. So this is going to be really interesting. Watch the video till the end so that you get a clear picture and understanding on the concept of shared libraries. So to start with, this is the diagram that I have for you to explain shared library in one slide. So first of all, this diagram is divided into two parts. On the top, you have DevOps engineer without shared libraries, who is using Jenkins without shared libraries. And then in the bottom, you have DevOps engineer who is using shared libraries in their Jenkins pipeline. So let's take example of DevOps engineer who is working at amazon.com just for example. So in this MNCs or in this, uh, you know, top companies, there will be a lot of microservices because they are huge applications. So for each and every microservice, as part of your DevOps engineering, you will write CICD pipeline for each microservice. Now, why do you write CICD pipeline for each microservice? Because microservices are the things that are individually managed. Like you can individually deploy, individually create or destroy depending upon your requirement, that is the concept of microservice. There will not be dependency of one microservice with another microservice. So let's say you have login, you have logout, you have transaction payments. Each of them have to be individually managed. If they have to be individually managed, you need to write a CICD pipeline for each of this microservice. So in our case, let's assume you are using Jenkins as an orchestrator and for 200 microservices that you have in your organization, you have written 200 Jenkins pipelines, ignoring the different environments that you have dev staging and prod. So this is the minimalistic configuration that you will have. So once you start writing the Jenkins pipeline, if you have watched a previous video, for example, uh, I have explained the concept of ultimate CI CD pipeline where I have covered the end to end process of deploying right from stage of checkout source code management to deploying the application on the Kubernetes cluster using Argo CD, I have covered each and every aspect like the CI part and the CD part. So this configuration will more or less be the same for 200 microservices that you are trying to build, right? So what you will do as a DevOps engineer, you will go to the application, the first CI CD pipeline that you have built and you will take the Jenkins file and you will copy the Jenkins file for your next application and you will start modifying it depending upon the additional requirements or depending upon the uh, file name changes or the folder name changes that you require to do in this Jenkins file for your new application, right? Whenever you start onboarding a new application, that's what you will do. I mean, that's a regular practice. Instead of you writing each and everything, it is good to copy and you create the Jenkins file or the CICD pipeline for your new application. While this is completely fine, there is no problem with it. Once you have 200 pipelines ready for all your 200 applications, let's say, let's say, there is a configuration change that you have to do because you have con because you have copied this Jenkins file to all the other 200 applications. You know, in the first application itself, you have noticed that, OK, I don't want to use MVN clean package, but I want to use MVN clean install for all the microservices in my organization. This is just an example. It can be any other thing like you might want to add uh, other arguments to your uh, Maven targets or any simple change. OK, but what would be the result of it? You have to go back and edit 200 Jenkins pipelines. Now you understand how much time will it take for you to manually go to each and every pipeline and update this simple change. Sometimes it can be even a serious change where in your Jenkins pipeline, you have noticed some security issue. Probably you have exposed something that should not be exposed. While you start using the Jenkins pipeline, you have realized that your secret or your environment variable is showing up in the logs or it can be anything, right? So you can run into any issue in one of your pipeline and you realized that because you have copied more or less to the other pipelines, 
this issue has to be fixed in all the pipelines. So it's a humongous effort to modify all of the 200 pipelines. And more than that, if you don't modify, you are running into security issue. So to solve this problem, what Jenkins said is we will simplify this process for you using the concept of shared libraries. Now, what is a shared library? A shared library is a common repetitive or a common reusable code. Like in this case, this Maven target or, you know, this stage for build and test will more or less be same for all the applications. Right. So you are just switching to the directory where your application is. So in your case, this application, all the applications can be in a same directory called slash SRC slash PKG slash main. It can be in the same directory in all your Git repos. And this can be your Maven target for all the applications. So more or less this code is same. So why do I, you know, uh, have to write this same piece of code in all the 200 pipelines. And in future, if I have to modify, I have to modify in, e in all the 200 pipelines. So what Jenkins said is, okay, don't do that. We will provide you a concept called shared libraries. And what you have to do is you need to put this code, okay? So you need to just put this repetitive code as a library in your Git repository and reference the library in your stage. So let's say I'm writing a library for it and I'm calling the name of the library. Don't worry. I'll show you how to write that, how to do that, everything. But right now, just understand the concept that I'm explaining. So here, what you will do is instead of that, you will just say Maven build. This Maven build is the library that you have written. This is the name of the library. And when you write this, what Jenkins controller, Jenkins controller is nothing but the Jenkins itself. What it will do is it will go to your shared library and it will start searching for this file and it will execute the action. Now, what you will write in that shared library is the same piece of code that you have here. Okay. So the advantage is that instead of writing this in 200 pipelines, you just write the same thing in a shared library in a file called shared library and you will reference that file here. And it's up to the Jenkins controller to read the file called Maven build and to execute whatever is in that file. So to do that, you will also write one more statement at the starting of your pipeline. That is, you have to import the library. So to import the library, the syntax in Groovy will be something like this called library followed by the name of the library. Let's say the name of your library is my um, shared library, for example. So you will just add this line here and followed by this syntax, which I'll explain what it is. But for now, just understand that it is that simple. So you can replace this entire pipeline. This entire pipeline can be replaced using some simple shared library targets. So even this thing here, the checkout thing, more or less it will be the same except for the repository name. So what you can do is you can again create a shared library for it and just pass one argument to the shared library that will be name of your repository, right? Because the entire thing is same. The git checkout and the git branch command is the same. Even if you look here, the sonar URL will be the same. This URL will not change. For your entire organization, you will try to keep one sonar cube. And after that, the credentials will be the same because you are using a service account for Jenkins. So the credentials will be the same. And again, the Maven targets for Sonar will also be the same. So there is nothing technically that's changing here. So you can replace this entire thing again with a shared library. So this way, what you can do is you can standardize your pipeline. Okay. And I'll show you how to do that. Don't worry about that. So eventually what will happen is the amount of code that you have to write in your new Jenkins pipeline will get reduced and it will be a standard template. That's it. So any new person even you are hiring a new person that is coming to your team, all that they need to do is they can reference this pipeline and they can just copy paste that pipeline. And they just have to pass some arguments called what is the repository uh, URL or what is the name of the repository. And if they want to modify something uh, related to uh, Maven targets, they'll just pass that also as an argument to the shared library and nothing more than that. So what are the advantages of the shared libraries apart from Apart from these things, apart from the repetitive code, reusable code, the other advantages will be that just change in one place, okay? And it will get reflected in all your pipelines, okay? So one single point of contact for all your modules or all your Jenkins pipelines. And what I've done is I have listed out these things for you in this folder called shared libraries so that before your interviews, you can reference this. When someone asks you what is the advantages of shared libraries, you can say 
standardization of pipeline, which I've just explained, reduce the duplication of code. Apart from that, it is very easy to onboard new applications, new teams, new team member or new projects because you have standardized it. You can simply copy this pipeline and you can put this in another project. After that, code maintenance is also very less. In future, if there is a security issue with your code that you have written, you can just go to that shared library uh, in your GitHub repository and you can just modify it. And you don't have to worry about maintaining the code for all other Jenkins pipelines. Reduce the risk of errors. Obviously, when you are not writing code, when you are moving towards low code. So understand the term called low code. I'm not saying no code. I'm saying low code. So low code is because you have reduced the writing code or you have reduced the amount of code that you write in your pipeline significantly. So that's why I called it low code. So using shared libraries, you can move from writing code to writing low code, less amount of code. Okay, so these are some of the advantages of shared libraries. And apart from that, you can also learn about the definition of shared libraries. If you want to like before the interview, if you just want to quickly reference, you can use this folder. You can start this repository. You can fork this repository. There are already close to 2000 people. If you combine fork and stars that are following this repository. So till now, if you still did not understand what is shared library, just understand it as a very simple concept. If you are writing a Java application, if you are writing a Python application or shell scripting, what you usually do, if there is a repetitive code in your script, you just try to put that in a function and you just try to reference that function wherever it is required. Similarly, even in the shared libraries, because you are writing multiple pipelines and there is a reusable shared code, you just create a library for it and you just reuse it. Okay. Now I will go to the thing of showing you how to write this shared library. Okay. So what you will do is create either you can use the uh, same GitHub folder where you have your uh, uh, source code or where you have your Jenkins file or you can also use a different GitHub repository for your entire shared library things. It's up to you. But what you need to do is as I have created here, you need to create a folder called VARS. Now on a high level, shared library is divided into three folders. One is SRC that is source. One is VARS. One is resources. But in this video, I'll only cover about the VARS because the source SRC and resources is a very high level topic that you need to learn only after learning these things. Let's not go into that, those things. But even if you try to focus on these things called uh, whatever I'm showing to, showing you today, you will achieve a significant amount of improvement to your CI CD pipelines. So what you will do is you will create a folder called VARS and inside this folder, you will add all of your shared libraries. Let's say I've added a very simple one here called hello world.groovy. And what I've done here is this is the first line that you write in your shared library called definition call. So this is a syntax for writing functions in Groovy where you use DEF as a keyword and followed by the name of the function. So here the method name is call and what it does is you see here the name of the file is hello world. So in your Jenkins file, when you call this uh, file called hello world, this gets executed. So I'll show you live on a Jenkins pipeline so that you understand this in a much clear way. But for now, understand that in the Jenkins zero to hero or in your uh, GitHub repository, create a folder called VARS and inside that folder, you have to write your shared libraries. I can show you that uh, I have the Jenkins instance already configured. So just let me open the Jenkins instance. So this is my Jenkins instance. I'll enter the password. So if you want to learn how to create the Jenkins instance, how to run the Jenkins instance, what plugins to install, build your own CI CD pipeline, then you can watch these three videos on my channel. This is the first video Jenkins zero to hero. I'll put the link in the description, which covers everything about Jenkins right from the installation to creating your first Jenkins pipeline, multi-stage Jenkins pipeline and a lot of other things. Apart from this, I have two wonderful projects on Jenkins. That is the explanation of ultimate CI CD pipeline, where I'll give you a knowledge of how to build this entire ecosystem using Jenkins and the implementation video of this ultimate CI CD pipeline, where you don't have to do much. Everything, the script and the configuration theory part 
step by step manual everything is available you just have to follow these steps so yeah i'll put the link uh, for the description i mean i'll put the link in the description for all these three videos and uh, if you want to learn you can take a look at these videos now this is my jenkins this is a plain jenkins i don't have anything here first of all i'll show you how to write a very simple jenkins pipeline and replace it with shared library right because because if you want to move your existing code to shared library you need to have a jenkins pipeline first so let's create a very uh, very quickly let's create a uh, jenkins pipeline i have uh, selected the pipeline name as test pipeline and uh, i'll click okay randomly provide a name this is not mandatory so i'll call it as test pipeline and i'll use the existing code here itself let's say i want to use the code for hello, hello world and see if your uh, jenkins is in right i mean your jenkins is rightly configured so just execute uh, and uh, if the execution is successful that your runner or your workload or your worker is rightly configured so yeah i executed and the output is hello world so that means my jenkins is perfect it is working as expected now i'll replace this code using the shared libraries see what i'm going to do is you know in this code let's say this code is repetitive in all my Jenkins pipeline. Let's say there is a step called hello, or let's say there is a step called greetings in all of my Jenkins pipeline, or you can assume this as your Maven target stage as well. I'll show you that as well, but because we are starting from basics, let's say in every Jenkins pipeline, you have a greeting stage where you will greet the people who are, you know, uh, executing this pipeline. So instead of this, uh, hello world, probably it can be as simple as, Hi from DevOps team. And after this, you can have your other stages where, you know, uh, the next stage can simply be uh, checkout and the next step can be uh, Maven uh, where you build your application. Okay. So now what you can do is instead of writing this one, every pipeline, what you can do is you can convert this greeting into a shared library. Now, how do you do that? Just go to your Jenkins folder here. Okay, create Jenkins uh, repository on your GitHub. Switch to the VARS folder. And what I have done here is I have created a file called hello world.groovy. Watch, watch this carefully. The syntax matters. It is always recommended to use camel casing for your shared library uh, Jenkins files. So I started uh, with a small letter. And whenever there is a new word, just use the capital letter. So that's why it's hello world where H is small and W is capital dot groovy file. And here I have written this function called def call. This is the syntax. You have to use the same syntax and inside it, write the code for your shared library. What I said here, hi from DevOps team. This is a shared library example. Now I can simply use this shared library by importing the shared library in my Jenkins. So even before importing it here, what you need to do is go to your test pipeline or oh, sorry, go to your Jenkins and move to the Jan manage Jenkins, move to configure system. Inside the configure system, what you need to do is just search for global pipeline. Here you configure your shared library. So if you notice here, what I've done is I have named my shared library as my shared library. You can provide any random name and then you provide the branch name. What is the name of the branch? Or you can also provide a V1, V2, whatever you would like to, but it is always preferred to use the branch name. And then in the modern SCM section, just provide the URL of your Git repository. So in my case, the Git repository is this one, Jenkins zero to hero. Okay. By default, when you provide this Jenkins shared library, I mean, Jenkins controller will start searching for the shared library in the VARS folder. Okay. That's why you don't have to mention what is the name of the folder and click on the save button now your shared library configuration is done and your pipeline is ready if you want to use the shared library so that's why what i'll do is i'll go to my pipeline and i'll import import the library so to import the library you can just say at or at the rate library inside the double quotes the name of the library so the name of the library that i have given in the uh, jenkins configure system is my shared library so that's why I'll use the same name followed by space underscore. Now, what does this space underscore say? It says that everything that is present in the library. Okay. So you want to import 
every module, every method, or you want to imp uh, import everything that is present in the shared library. So it is similar, like let's say you're writing a Java application or Python application. In the import statements, you use the star, uh, or in the import statements, you say that import everything from a particular module. Similarly, in Groovy, this is the syntax. In Python, you use from uh, followed by the module name star, whereas in Java, you use different syntax. And in Groovy scripting, you use this syntax called hyphen underscore. Now replace this thing here. And what you will do is you just provide the name of the file. Watch carefully. I'm providing the name of the file, but I'm not providing the name of the function inside the file. Okay. This is where people get confused. So inside the VARS, I've provided the name of the file as hello world.groovy. And the name of the file has to be provided, not the def call. You should not provide the function name. Okay. So that's why what I'll do is I'll just provide hello world okay now if you click on the save button and execute the pipeline you will notice that the code will be picked up from the github and it will be executed as the pipeline if you have 100 pipelines you just need to modify like only once this is a one-time configuration and you will notice that it says hi from devops team this is a shared library example now let's try to understand this in terms of mav and targets because this is a quite generic or, uh, you know, quite simple example that I've provided. So if you want to do the same things for Maven targets, what you will do is you can pick up your Maven example. So, uh, you know, I can pick one example here. I can write a stage called stage. So let's call this as checkout stage where you are checking out code from SEM. Okay. And the second stage where you are trying to build using Maven, what you will do is you will. So this is how it would look right. Steps and inside the steps, what you will do is you will write the Maven target called MVN clean install, for example. So again, this is a repetitive code. So what you will do is you will go here and you will remove this line. You'll go back to your Jenkins folder. Uh, that is your Jenkins repository in GitHub. And inside the VARS folder, you will add a new file and you will name this file, whatever you would like to. Uh, let's say I want to name it as Maven build because it is doing Maven build after all, followed by dot groovy. And here I'll use the same syntax called def call followed by what I want to execute here. So what I want to execute, I want to execute a shell command. And what is that shell command called? MVN clean install. Now, because you have already configured Jenkins shade library, this repository as a shade library in your configured system, you don't have to go back and do it again for one pipeline, 10 pipelines, 100,000 pipelines. The configuration has only, I mean, should be only done once. And here, what you will do is I'll just call that Maven target file name. That is MVN build. That's all. So if you have 10 things, you can put uh, the 10 stages as shared libraries using different file names in your GitHub repository. That's how you standardize your pipelines. And now let's say you want to modify something. Okay, we'll take the same example. So you have the hi from DevOps team, right? So someone said to you that I don't want hi from DevOps team. This is a shared library example, but I just want hi from DevOps team and remove this uh, this line in all the 200 pipelines. So you'll just go to your GitHub repository. In previous case, you have to go to 200 uh, 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 Jenkins pipelines, but here you'll just go to GitHub repository and you'll just remove this line and say hi from DevOps team. That's it. And just make this code commit. As you make the code commit, you will notice that once you rerun your Jenkins pipeline, the new change is picked up. So this new change can be the echo statement change, Maven pipeline target, uh, sorry, Maven targets change, Nexus related change, Sonar cube related change, deployment related change, anything. So now you will see hi from DevOps team. So this is the concept of shared library and this is how you use shared library in your Jenkins. I hope you found today's video informative. Be ready with the interview questions as well which you can refer in the same repository in the same github uh, repository under the shared libraries folder thank you so much for watching the video i'll see you all in the next video where i'll cover the concept of github actions and gitlab pipelines as well so before that if you haven't subscribed to my channel please 
subscribe to my channel for more such interesting content take care everyone bye